the aftermath of the, the death of George Floyd and, and um, um, you've been hearing about the rioting. And then we have also been shut in. Many of still the United States, parts of it, is still shut in and, and uh, they don't have mobility. They're not able to move and go around and, and we're still dealing with uh, the problems of employment or underemployed or having a situation where you're pending, uh, possibly losing your job. Uh, we, we're dealing with economic strife and, and yes, difficulties yes, yes. Um, that are throughout. And uh, I want to just encourage you all. Uh, the Lord's been dealing with me out of the book of uh, Ezekiel. And it goes to the 37th um, chapter of Ezekiel. And it talks about the valley of the dry bones. It, it speaks specifically that uh, Ezekiel had a vision. So part of what we've been talking about for the last month or so is vision. Yeah. And vision is very important uh, to have a vision and uh, uh, to have a vision for yourself, to have a vision for your family, to have a vision for your, your business, your company, for where you work, to have a vision for your, your children. Um, all of this is a part. And, and Ezekiel was the individual that God had chosen. And, and he was a priest at, at this time. And, and God called him and, and gave him a vision. And, and through the vision, he told him, go speak. Whether people will listen, whether people won't listen. And that's one of the most important things that you need to take part in, is that when you have a vision, it's, it's not predicated on whether people agree with your vision. You have to know that the vision came from God, and you have to walk in, in that vision. And the vision doesn't mean that, that you have the answer to all things. But what it does mean is that God has given you insight on how to be victorious. And then uh, God will put people by your side. God will send people to help you. God will send people to, to encourage you. God will send people to, to bless you um, in the midst of it. But you cannot depend on people as you see your, your vision. And, and uh, part of the problem that we're dealing with now is that uh, we lack vision. And the Bible tells us, uh, it said that uh, you perish for the lack of vision. When you don't have a vision, my people perish. So Amen. vision is very important. But, but what also is important is uh, when God gives you something to walk in it, because vision and destiny are connected. Um, destiny is something that... that, that uh, is preordained. God has ordained you for success. Yes. Bel beloved, I would that you prosper, be in health even as your soul has prospered. God has ordained you for success. Yes, we, we, you, you're going to have a lot of distractions. You're going to have a lot of things to interrupt. You're going to have things that discourage you. But if you stay true to your vision, then you'll be successful. And this is the thing that, that, and vision takes time. Sometimes vision is implemented in a year. Sometimes it's five years. Sometimes it's 10 years. Some visions don't come to pass for 20 years. Uh, you heard on last week uh, that the, the, uh, my wife's prophecy didn't materialize 13 years later. There are visions in the Bible that, that took place 450 years after the vision was given. Um, there are visions in the Bible where it took place a thousand years after the vision. Um, the Bible tells us, it said, uh, uh, write the vision, make it plain, that he that read it may run. And it said the vision is for an appointed time. Though it tarry, wait for it, it will not tarry. So, so that lets you know that it will happen. It's for an important time. But what I want to talk a little bit about today is Ezekiel. And Ezekiel uh, was a priest who was called to uh, the prophetic order. He was called to be a prophet. He was called 
to minister. And and uh, him and he 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 was actually one of those that was carried away into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, and he prophesied in Babylon. And Babylon was a place where the uh, Israelites were enslaved, where they were uh, taken captive, where they yes. were essentially prisoners there. Uh, and he prophesied. So sometimes a word of God is going to come to you in the midst of you being in dark times. Sometimes the word of God will come to you, you in the midst of you being in prison. Whether it's a spiritual prison or whether it is a natural prison. God's word has no depths, meaning that it has nothing that he can't get to. The Bible says that if you make your bed in hell, he said his word would find you there. If you go to the uttermost parts of the earth, his word will find you there. In the deepest of despair, God can speak and he will speak and he is speak. speaking. Yes. Uh, in, in the midst of whatever you're going through, and it's, it's really uh, heart, heartbreaking uh, of the many things that we're hearing today, and, and we see it. I mean, uh, we happen to live in, an, in a neighborhood uh, that, that uh, has had problems with crime, has been problems with murder. We've, we've had situations where people uh, were killed only uh, uh, maybe 100 feet, 200 feet from where we live. And, and not one, not two, but three people in less than uh, three months. Um, and, and that can be very heart-wrenching. That can be terrifying. That can be upsetting. That can um, take your strength away, take your, 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 yes. your vision away. And, and we consider us uh, living in a, a decent neighborhood. But, you know, crime can find you anywhere. Uh, uh, but in the midst of it, I want to encourage the people of God. That, that God has a word, and his word is powerful. So Ezekiel becomes this prophet, and God speaking to me, speaks to him through many visions. So one of the visions he has is the vision of the dry bones, the valley of the dry bones. And so in the vision, God takes him into essentially this graveyard, and he sees a multitude of, of bones. He sees nothing but graves. He sees countless dead. Uh, and and I, I imagine he's looking at millions that, yeah. that are dead, that have died. And, and God speaks to him and says, Ezekiel, can these people who were once alive, can they live again? Can the dead rise again? Can these bones live? And, and uh, Ezekiel um, went to God and said, God, only you know this. Only you can do this. And then God tells him to do something that I'm going to tell you to do. God tells him to prophesy to the dry bones. Yes. And so that's the word today is for you to speak life, to you to speak prosperity. I want you to speak those things that are not as though they were. And even though, even though you have a